Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to make some of these beautiful little book page cluster strip flowers. So they're just out of strips of book page. Um, these ones here, the measurements for the strips are four inches by a quarter, so they're all a quarter. And I have made smaller ones as well. So these ones are three and a quarter, so it's just um, basically an inch under um, by a quarter. And they're just really, really cute and you can put them on big labels like this or you can add them to other clusters like your um, collage clusters and then they're instant to go on a page a tuck a pocket in your journal so let's have some fun and make these so the colored ones i've actually used ink or oxide uh, distress oxide and i've just put them down and and inked them like that just to get some different color variations so we've got some strips of the walnut stain and then we've got some uh, yellow ones these are the smaller strips so you can see the difference in the size of the strips so that's your four inch by a quarter and that's your three and a quarter inch by a quarter so you can make them as big or as little as you like so I'm going to cut some strips with you I've got some pre-cut and then some some rings already glued and we'll show you how we actually put them together now you don't have to use buttons for the centre, you can use brads, you can put some, uh, this one's got some lace on it first and then a button down, so you can decorate them however you like. But the basis of them is um, just putting the strips together and then gluing them in a fan shape. So I've already got some here cut to the four inches and I'm going to put them in my trimmer and they're going to go quarter of an inch which is basically just one of these spaces that we have here let's make sure and I've got a few I'm cutting a few pages at a time so it's whatever your cutter or your guillotine will handle it's easier to cut a few at a time it just saves a little bit of time makes you um, project a lot more um, enjoyable I guess so I guess the method is similar to uh, how you used to make those paper daisy chains by putting the circles together oh that last bit's always the harder one to cut And that last strip there is more than a, a quarter. So you can put that off to the side and use it for something else. So we get these beautiful strips like this. And I always make sure that the most of the book page print or the words are on the back. So that would be the inside because we're going to be sticking that down. So the easiest way I've found with these is to stick the outside first like that so we'll do there's six to a flower so we'll do six well, if you want to do less you certainly can the six is sort of the maximum that I've worked with and it gives you a fuller flower. So remember the old daisy chains, we used to then loop it together and make a chain. So it's very similar to that, except we're not, not looping them together in that way. You can use glue stick if you want to as well. I'm using art glitter glue today. It dries, dries fairly quickly. So whatever glue you've got on your desk, but if it's relatively quick drying, that would benefit you rather than sitting here holding, holding that in place until it dries. So two, four, six, we've done next to one, but that doesn't matter because we're likely to do another one in a minute and then I always work with the end that it's joined I put a just a dob of glue 
directly under it, which is the center, and then you just press it down. So you're making like a figure eight. And just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be too perfect. Just like that, so we've got six. And then we just get the first one, which will form our base. And put a layer down. Now I like to have the join face down. The first one, it doesn't matter. And then you just make a cross. Now the next one, so if you're working with less, you could just go cross and cross. But I actually like the flowers to be a little bit fuller. So I'll pull it to the side like that, which will give me enough room to put another one across there. But then I'll turn it and I'll do the other side the same. So rather than going straight, you're, you're angling it off to the side like that. And then now you can put one straight through there and one straight through there. One through there. And then one through there. So if you were putting a brad, you could either put holes in the center first before you glued, because you know that's that's a few layers thick, or you could get your all like that and, and get a piercing mat and pierce through and then put your your brad in there which we'll do a brab one in a minute. Now you can also, for a little bit of effect before you put the button on, you could ink it out like a feather or you could get some um, water paints and do that if you wanted to have a little bit of uh, contrast there. But really, once you put the button on, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I've got a little bit of contrast in the lace, so entirely up to you. It's You could do so much with them, really. So then you choose sort of what colour button that you want. One there. Oh, I actually like the little black one. So you can see the difference. That one, actually that one looks good. I might go that one. And then just put a fair dollop of, I'm using art glitter glue and put the button down. Just hold it for a couple of seconds and then pop it off to the side. So that's your first one done. So you could make a few of these ahead of time. So we've got one here that I have inked the book page with the walnut stain. So same principle, just a glue in the middle. So they're really simple these and they're really great to have they're a bit of fun to have through your journal you could ever have a cluster of them on the cover of a journal would look really great as well and it's a great way to use your scraps up even if you hand cut like if you had strips of book page that wasn't quite wide enough to go into a guillotine or a cutter you could hand cut them and just eyeball the width. If you didn't have any book page, then definitely just some scrap, scrap book paper. Even coffee dyed paper would look great too. Just have some sort of plainish.
or strips of coloured paper. Some of your gel prints. Absolutely endless in what you can do with these guys. And all you need is or something to cut them with some glue so remember off to the side oh, without turning him too much so yeah um some scraps a bit of glue and something to cut the strips with is all you need and you know some buttons or brads or you could just even punch out a little circle to go on there down and then have a look at what color that one's nice actually I like that one sort of like a opaque yellowy orange although there's that one as well You can see like you get completely different looks with them. Let's do another plain one. And then we'll have a look at putting some on some labels that I've made. So remember we need six strips per flower and these ones are four inches long by a quarter of an inch wide and the smaller ones which we'll do a green one in a minute they are three and a quarter by a quarter so depending on how big you want them that's how you do your measurements so if you wanted them bigger, you'd go five inch. So that's that's the difference in an inch as to how your how big your flowers would turn out. So I wouldn't use these on something like a tag that you're sliding in and out of a pocket because they are a 3D embellishment. They're not a flat one. But definitely on the outside of a pocket. Or on the front of your journal. We're going to do a brad on this one. my cutting mat I'm going to pierce a hole and then I'll get a brush 
that. I do have some really nice pearl buds somewhere, but I um, don't seem to put my hands on them at the moment. So you could even use, uh, you know, a pearl cabochon that's got your flat surface to glue down. I'll have a look in the drawer beside me to see if I've got any of those. Just so you can see the variety that you can do with them. I'm just going to push my all right through just to make that hole a bit bigger. And then just to flatten it because we don't want to add any bulk. Just sort of squash it down a little bit. And that's that's one with the bride. Let me have a look if I've got a cabochon. Which I don't, but I do have some bling. Some yellow bling there as well. Get rid of that. Right, so let's do this small green one. So these are the three and a quarter by a quarter, and I've inked them with uh, bundled sage distress oxide. They're a little bit more fiddlier to work with. Than the four inch ones but they are super cute so we need six rings you could make all colors with these depending on sort of you know what tones you're using in your journal Greens would look good in your botanical journals or even in your vintage because it's a really pastel green. And you can tell I've used scraps here because I've had, I was inking something on the back, which won't matter because you won't see it. And even if you do see a little bit of it, it just adds contrast. So two, four, six, we've got our six. Pop that off to the side. Now we glue them together. Make our figure eights. So I, once again, where you've joined it, I'll put a bit of glue down directly under that because we don't want our joins out on our petals. I love making little projects like this so relaxing and they're good to sit down and do a little bit of a mass make that way you've got them in your stash so you know if you've got your equip uh, your, your equipment out and you're making these don't just make one or two you know make six or seven or eight and then you've got them in your stash for future projects And it's a good way to get variety in your journal too because sometimes when we sit down and make something we seem to um, be repetitive in what we do so if we've got different things in our stash already made ready to go then you know the journal that we're working on we can have variety through that Another thing we can do too is we can add a flower to the middle. Not on this small one, but on one of the big ones I'll do in a minute. Okay. 
Now the small one you can choose whether you want to do six or whether you just want to do four. So if we do four, it'll look like this. Which is okay too with the smaller ones. So that one there's six and that one there's four. So they both look really good. So we'll leave that one at four. Now let's look. I really like that. So I bought a, a bag of all different size buttons from Spotlight and I'm really happy with them because you don't normally find these little ones in too many places. Well, you know, here in Australia anyway. So it was good to get a like a, a mixed pack from Spotlight. And then that, that's that one. And then an idea what you can do is I've actually put this on a label. So I've made these labels, um, which I will do a video on. I was inspired by, a, I did a craft along with um, Margaret from Seven Plaza, I think, has got a video on um, making labels. So it's just um, cardstock and scrapbook paper. Um, you could do coffee dyed paper. And you just cut it to whatever size you want. Um, I think these ones were three and a half by two and then the smaller ones were three by one and three quarters I think and then you just make your your paper or your writing your journaling spot just um, under those measurements so you've got a bit of a border around so you just cut a, a rectangle like this and then I've corner rounded it inked it and glued them together but as you can see with one of these um, little book page cluster strip flowers you can you can put it on there you can put it on there and it just looks so good so I might put a white one on there make sure we'll go smaller one smaller one on there or the yellow one on there definitely the smaller one on there so it's good to have your flowers in a different size as well and then that can go straight on a pocket you could put a word out there you could stamp a little image you could put a butterfly or something down in the corner here we can add some lace as well which we'll do let's do add some lace to underneath let me see what color do we want well, that one looks good. So this is just an old doily that I've been cutting up. I just put put the pin in my glue so it doesn't dry up on me. So I'm just going to cut a piece off that. So I'm not measuring anything, just eyeballing. We're just laying down some, you know, extra texture. I might use fabric glue. So this is Helmar um, fabric glue. Uh, really, really good. I use a lot of it. But when you're working with it, if you're doing a lot with it, make sure you're in a well-ventilated space. It does have a quite a strong fume to it. And then just a dollop there to put the flower on top. So as you can see, the lace is just added. You know, it could be lace, it could be gauze, netting. It's just added a little bit of extra. But I've gone with the white lace because I still wanted to feature the flower on it. So we pop that one off to the side. Now let's make that white one or the plain one again because I want to add I want to add a silk flower to the middle and then we'll do a brad so showing you what I was talking about before when we glue them individually we will put 
the holes short rather than putting it through the end like last time like I did that previous one it will make life a lot easier for you it's a little bit more work but definitely better to do it that way and you could do you put the holes in it too if you were sewing the buttons on I'm just lining up halfway. I'm actually doing it on the uh, join, putting the glue on the join side this time. So either there or there's fine. There's no right and wrong. We just want to get it in the center. When we push it to together, we just want it in the center and we don't want our join out on the pedals. Get our cutting mat back and our all. And then just poke a hole in the middle. And make it a little bit bigger because we've got the brad to go through it. And because I'm not using a mini brad, I'm using a bit bigger brad because I wanted the bigger head on it. be really careful when you're poking something sharp through like that you certainly don't want it going through your finger so it's good to get just the tip through like that and then pull it down okay so I'm going to put the brad through the flower so this is just a silk flower I bought um, some artificial um, flowers that come in a big big head and um, hydrangeas they were and I got a few different colors so I got some really good variety and I pulled them apart so you'll see that I've got some really great colors some pinks and greens and what have you and um, yeah I ended up with a heap of them so I love using using these so now we can just thread it thread it through so it gets you cross initially and I'll just put a dab of glue on that one because I want it to hold in place because if you just if you don't glue it then when it's on a brad it can swivel and your petals won't be even so you can see we've got and you know you could use this have it a little bit bigger as well and have you could have um, your four inch and then go your five inch and have like a double layer do four of each so there's just a lot of different things you can do with them they're not just a one trick pony and really squash that in because when we split that we're going to um, squash it down again with the awl
we'll just flatten it down and it just helps flatten the back of it and that's another way you can do it so if we were to put that on on a label darker one because we want to feature the flower how good does that look you know you can see that the, they look completely different um, again I mean you could put another little like a punched flower before you put the brad on there too just so much you can do with them and you could just go on and on different colors like I said different sizes you could you could layer a couple over to get it even thicker they're just absolutely beautiful you could stick a flower on there so I know that one's got a brad on there but let's stick a flower on there and then put a button just to show you that it's just you could just keep going and going and going I haven't glued that real well and then let's get the mini yellow one very cute very cute but there you go guys um i'll just recap a few that we've done today um like i said cut strips with your book page so the big ones that we made are four inch by a quarter an inch or you can go four and a quarter by a quarter the smaller ones that we made are three and a quarter by a quarter and you just basically cut them a quarter of an inch and you need six strips to a flower or like a, we said before that one's done with four four strips so it's depending on just to give you an idea it's depending on how full you want them you could do four of the big ones and four of the little ones actually we might quickly while we've because we do have them cut let's do that and get a look at what that looks like with the two different sizes with the four. So go okay, one, two, three, four. And then we've got four green ones here. We could do the center green. Two, three, four. As you know, we only need three of each because we only need six all up, even better. Let's glue them together. Just so you can see that really, you know, your creativity just takes over. Like I just thought of that when I was showing you the difference between the two sizes and and the difference between just using four strips to six strips to get a fuller one. So when you've got them in front of you, you think, oh, I wonder, you know, what I could do there or I wonder what I could do there. This might need um, an extra couple of strips with even numbers too. But we'll see how we go. So once again, just make our figure eight or our loops. going to make up extra one of each because I'm feeling we're going to need either one extra of one size or one each extra of one size which will effectively make it eight eight strips but it'll be four of each we may or may not need them
my fingers have become very sticky from the glue. I'll have to put a baby wipe onto them after this. Okay, so we've got four of each. Let's see how many, because normally a flower would be six, but let's see how we go. So we'll do our cross first. So working with the big ones first. And then we would cross over there cross over there so yeah definitely four of the big ones And yeah, you will need four, four of the smaller ones. Lovely, and then pick a might yeah it might go a plain a button for the middle. Just gonna go white. And how good does that look? And if we were to put it on so super cute guys we've got some made with um, some silk flowers on top all embellished with brads and buttons got your plain one there got your lace underneath if you're putting it on a label um, you've got your distress oxide walnut stain and I've just um, I've just got the strip basically and I've just inked it like that after they've been cut but you can also ink your page that's cut to your four inches or your three and a quarter and just ink the whole page and then then cut your strips out i've got plain book page with some lace under the button got a dark center here that one's been distressed and that's um they've put on a label we've got that one on a label so that's the small one just using four not six and then we've got the bigger one using the six so it shows you the difference between the fullness and that's that one's used with eight actually so it could be spread a little bit more evenly around but um, I really love that one you could put um, a bigger one if you had a we'll just pretend that this is bigger and I'll just put it off to one side actually let me get the green one so you could have more out you could have sort of like a three layer if you had a couple of bigger strips at the back but so much you can do guys i hope that's inspired you to make these um they are super fun and super easy you can do it with your scraps so it's another great way to get rid of your scraps um, especially if you've got strip scraps or even if you just got um, strips of book page just cut some strips out they're not very wide as you can see so you're going to use um, a lot of your scraps that you wouldn't necessarily use in your journal anyway and then yeah get some lace out play with some lace make some of these labels yourself too um, they are super fun I just sort of gave you rough measurements of those in there but I hope I've inspired you today to drag out your scraps and have a go um, I've really enjoyed our time today so um, thank you to everybody that has subscribed so far and if you haven't already I would really love you to join my channel and hit the little notification button so 
when I upload new um, videos, which at this stage is Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, um, you'll get notified of them, guys, and I really appreciate all your support. Um, also, in the um, notes, the description there, I've got a link to my Buy My Coffee, and there's a couple of free digital downloads in there of some background papers that you're free to use as well. But thanks, guys, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.